Welcome to Marketplace Live. Let's defy gravity. Welcome back, everybody, and we are thrilled and excited. Uh, we've got another 20 minutes here, a 20 minute session where we're going to be talking about business continuity processes, disaster recovery, business practice, all that stuff. And we're, we're thrilled to have with us Pat Morley. Pat, who I've known for a little while now, um, we've been working with for a little while, who is the VP of Global Product Management in, uh, in SunGuard. SunGuard being really one of the go-to companies for this space. You know, you think about their workplace recovery services, it's really been the gold standard uh, for this type of activity for a number of years now. So we're thrilled and excited to have Pat with us to talk about that. It's been an interesting year, so we'll get up into that in a moment. But Pat, do you want to just say a little bit about what you do for the company, what product management means? I know you wear another another hat or two within the organization, but uh, what, what this means in this context uh, before we get into the meat of it. Sure, I will do, Phil. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, you know, have a discussion today with, with you and everybody. Yeah, so, so yeah, Pat Molly, um, some kind of availability services. I, for, I look after uh, two product streams, really. One's the co-location part of our business and um, our workplace recovery business. So um, from, from a product, it's making sure the products are relevant, yeah, up to date, are fit for purpose for, for the changing market. And it's never been truer than what's going on in the world at the moment. And I'll talk to some of those points as we get through but yeah making sure that that it's you know from a PL perspective that the product is uh, is doing exactly what it should be doing so uh, yeah so i'll take you through that a little bit later all right that's great stuff thanks Pat. well listen you and i i know at the beginning of this year we were working on the partnership we were working on restructuring a few bits and pieces and excitedly looking forward to 2020 and then this little pandemic waltzed into the picture really it's been an interesting year, I would guess. I mean, what, what have you seen? What have been sort of dramatic sort of changes for you, or what, what's been going on since the pandemic hit with regard to uh, you know workplace recovery? Yeah, so 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 I think it probably helps if I, if I kind of explain the workplace business, maybe just give you a, a kind of the basics sure. of of how that works. You know, we've been doing some guy have been in business about 40, 40 years. Um, workplace recovery about twenty five. I think I've been in the business about that length of time as well. So um, effectively, we have tens of thousands of, of desks with uh, PCs, telephony um, available for customers to utilize when they have a, a, a loss of production. So when they lose their production site, um, those, those, those services are just sitting there waiting to go and you can come to our site. You know, we can instantly rebuild your environment and get you back. So it's all about seamless recovery of business continuity. So there's two models. There's kind of a shared, which is a first come, first serve basis, and then a dedicated part of the business. So um, as I said, we're in, you know, um, well, we've got 75 buildings dotted across nine countries, um, you know, across North America, Europe, and out in India. And we've been kind of managing big disasters and kind of, you know, regional events, as we call them, for a very, very long time. So, you know, be it 9-11, be it Hurricane Sandy, Toronto blackouts, mm -hmm. London yeah. bombings, you know, terrorism in Paris. You know, we used to having citywide kind of events. And I think that what really changed this year was it was the first time that we had a global event that impacted the whole, you know, I mean, you know, impacted everything everywhere, but from a song guard availability perspective, you know, every single one of those sites was was busy with customers doing kind of split site working. So initially what they were doing was subdividing their workforce into two halves, leaving half of them in production and even the other half sitting with us. So if you had somebody infected with COVID, you could still carry on business. So that was very early on in the start of the pandemic. Um, and that was very effective and working very well. And we were, you know, we were, we were getting a lot of plaudits and a lot of kind of good press from what we're doing. And then what really changed was when lockdown came in and then people um, were sent home. Which, so it's the, it's the home working aspect that's really changed the dynamics of what we do day to day. Yeah, so that's, that's the big change for us. So listen, it must have been a, a, a real big impact. You know, suddenly, as you say, you, you've dealt with things that have been quite localized events, but suddenly everywhere is, is demanding your services and your people. That must have been quite a shock to the system. I mean, how did you react as a company? And, and, and not only do you have to service the customer base that wants everything everywhere, but you've got to change your own working practices and, and keep the lights on and stuff. So how did you navigate through that, Pat? 
Yes, yeah, good question. It was it was a big step up for for the business. You know, as, as you say, we you know we used to managing big events. You know, in in different regions at different times. So you know, to have everything running flat out really at the same point yeah. in time was 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 a big ask. And yeah, we did have to change the way that that we operate and the way that the teams interface. Um, you know, they're very very good at at disaster recovery. It's a very reactive kind of um, thing to be to be in the business of anyway. So, so the teams change their, their, their behavior. You know, we've had to change the, the way that the, the sites are accessed, the way that you can utilize walking through the sites. Um, you know, good to know that our networks and everything else stood up to the, to the extra workload. You know, um, there's, there's, there's probably a really good example where, uh, um, we've, we've got a, what we call mega voice recover anywhere product that really sits sits it's a pbx kind of recovery service that sits for in the background generally not used very much went from kind of nothing to um you know to uh, nearly 1.9 million minutes worth of calls a week is what they what it was going from 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 start and you know straight up so that's one example of of the scale of things that suddenly kicked in um Mm. yeah and and you know i guess what the lockdowns came in different countries at different times. So, so you know, we did have a few days here and there. Let's focus on France. Now let's move to the UK. You know, whichever way around it was going. So, uh, yeah. So it was it was a big step up, and uh, you know, testament to the teams that uh, they've done everything, and you know, everybody's been safe and well. Now, it must have been quite a shock to the system, though, even though you got a, a yeah. bit of a staggered response. What some um, what were you seeing in terms of industries and because you know some of these some industries some verticals think about this kind of thing you know they have to have it baked into their practices but I was listening to um, you know it's some of some of the retailers weren't very digital at all right so they had to switch their businesses were you seeing different industries staggering into wanting your services as well what was what was the picture there yeah I think I think. Banking and finance, I guess, are the ones that, because of regulation, you know, mandatory regulations uh, that they have to have business continuity plans. Uh, you know, they were very, very well versed and very well scripted and tested in in what they do, and they all had plans in place. Um, you know, so, so you know, very mature, yeah, used to doing it. So I think I think those those businesses really didn't have any problems um, split site working, yeah, and working their way through because they had plans. Um, it, Retail was one that some had, some didn't have, you know, um, and what they had in place really probably wasn't fit for purpose in a lot of situations where what they thought they were they were trying to protect against really wasn't a pandemic, you know, and, uh, you know, um, they had to change and adapt their plans. You know, our consultancy business has, uh, has done a lot of work with um, with lots of organizations to help guide them through what they need to be thinking about and how they need to be planning and how they need to protect themselves from the future future side of things. I can imagine it's it's gone up the agenda on the at the board table, getting the continuity. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it has, and, and, and I think you know, um, if I talk to you, know, you know, we, uh, I guess after we got through the lockdown and we, you know, people then started to work from home as as you know yeah. as they were mandated to work from home. That really changed, and the way. The, the, the boards, I think, you know, the exec teams suddenly were, well, actually, why do we need business continuity anymore? You know, we're, we're now running from home. You know, um, that seems to be working very effectively. Yeah, you know, do we really need to be kind of having, um, you know, um, you know, uh, people based in offices, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure, you know, from, from a digital perspective, you know, you guys are doing the same thing. So so we've had to really adapt the product set to to cope with, that those changes and I think um, you know to, to stay relevant and to stay uh, you know on point with uh, with our customers and make sure that, that we're there and I think there's a there's a couple of interesting things that have come out you know customers you know we've got some good examples of customers that have stayed with us right the way through so they never really went to home working you know we, we have a um, couple of call centers that are running full production out of our our sites at the moment one of them to do with um, Credit cards and and fraud, you know, and they are they are, you know they are in an office, in a protected environment, and they are answering calls within their normal twenty seconds or whatever it is, you know, versus competitors that maybe you know you you've had your cards stolen, you're now ringing somebody, they're sitting at home, 
you know, it's probably a young person in a, you know, in, in the family home, you know, and you're talking through, you know, private information at home. And, and these guys have seen, well, a winning business because they've been able to to utilize our facilities and stay stay in a protected environment. So, so you know, it's a competitive edge, I think, to being to being in the in in a production environment. And I think some of the other aspects of home working that that people haven't really thought through as um, I, I think you can protect from cyber. There's a lot of talk about cyber attacks and home being being more vulnerable. If you do it right, you can protect a person from home. But instead of protecting kind of one office of 500 people, you're protecting 500 endpoints, you know, because yes. each each of your house. I think I think that it's the confidentiality that you can't resolve from home. You know, I'm I'm sitting here. Somebody could be looking over my shoulder. Somebody could be taking a picture of my screen. No, it, there's no way of protecting from that. And, right. you know, it's only a matter of time before there'd be breaches of people doing stuff or or physical. You know, people don't think about the physical security aspects, you know. But if I'm a trader yeah, and I'm dealing systems at home, somebody could break into my house and force me to do something that, that you know, um, you know that, 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 that would be you know, wrong. Yeah. And those sort of things are not really thought through. So I think we're seeing. Quite a lot of those kind of things, you know. There was there was a really good example from a from a pharmaceutical company that are working on some of the COVID things at the moment, and they've just mandated all their employees switch off Alexa, you know, because effectively you've got a listening device sitting in your house, you know, um, you know, and who knows where that information goes, you know, you know, I'm just googling to buy a new car. You know, Alexa picks up on it and it then comes, you know, there's adverts coming in from other, you know, it's like um, all of that. I don't think that side of the, of, of the home working piece has really been been thought through. So um, so we've been working a lot with customers to make sure that, that the usability of our suites become much more relevant. So we've kind of unlocked the, you know, you can only invoke, you can only declare when you've got a disaster. Now we're saying come in utilize the facilities for as long as you want whenever you need them for yeah and we kind of just made it a whole lot but um you know if you want to split your people up you want to do it this way protect against different bits and pieces and i think that's kind of really resonating with uh with particularly the dedicated workplace customers they're, they're doing a lot of that kind of work yeah and, and you must be seeing i mean i think at the outset of this a lot of us thought well it'll be a few weeks or maybe a, yeah. a month or two now it's becoming the new norm really isn't it that yeah. it, and there's even a sense that after the dust settles maybe not everything returns to an office in the way that it did before so you know it, are you seeing that with your customers in the way that they're starting to think about the long you know the mid to long term plan about how they deliver their service yes we are absolutely and it, the question i think is how much real estate do we need yeah, do we still need do we still need a huge building in the middle of the town? You know, um, whereas, you know, I can you know, I can maybe now mix. And I think that's where we'll end up. I think we'll end up with a much more flexible workforce that are are kind of home working a couple of days a week in the office. So I think the scale of, of the size of office is probably going to come come to be smaller. You know, and I think, you know, whether you're in a London, out of London or we have, you know, in a New York, out of New York, you know, We've seen a lot of customers, but I know I've always subscribed to a location midtown, you know, in the middle of the town. Now I want an outside location that I can drive to. Yeah, so I'm not on public transport. I can actually park my car, go in the office. And I think our, our buildings kind of lend themselves to very modular buildings in that, you know, you can have a dedicated meeting room, dedicated kind of, uh, you know, dealing environment, a dedicated back office function. You know, canteen areas, they're quite, they're built and designed to be protected from the customer next door. So the whole isolation within a multi tenanty building is very, very strong. And if it, it's funny, you know, 12 months ago, we were thinking more towards do we get more like your WeWorks and your Regis's and have more, of, you know, collaborative areas and open plan and blah, blah, blah. And we were kind of going down that direction when actually the, the way that we've been traditionally designed right now is perfect for, uh, for for what customers are kind of re requiring and asking of us. So um, so I think and that that kind of that usability has led us into actually s s launching a new product, which we called Service Workplace, which is um, a production office, full blown production office that you can utilize. Mm -hmm. And 
get out of your lease. So if you don't want to lease a building for the next 10 years because you don't know what it needs, you can sign a smaller contract with us. You know, I normally have 100 production people. I only want a 20 or 50 size now, but I want to scale up and down. So I want to be able to burst at month end or we've got a marketing campaign we need to. And we can, we've got the ability to give customers you know, that burst capability with a smaller footprint. And I think that's really resonating. And I think to the procurement teams to be able to step out of long term leases and commit to a service provider like ourselves, you know, um, I think is as huge benefits. And that's seeing a lot of real, um, real good stuff coming through. Yeah, I see a lot of that. I see a lot of people, you know, you've got that thing of I want the flexibility because yeah. I don't want the long term commit. I've got to react to a situation. But on the other hand, I need the security. I need all the things that, you know, I may be a regulated industry or I just need to be aware from a cyber security point of view. I think that's why uh, we're certainly seeing a lot of that. Um, I guess, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of the time here that we, we have allotted. But. What, what do you think, you know, if I'm an IT manager or, a, 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 you know, chief risk officer or, you know, people who are wrestling with this, any sort of top thoughts, or advice, things to look out for, things to think about that, that you know, kind of as you're seeing best practice emerge here um, and, the, and they look at the sort of, you know, the future. Any, any thoughts about that, Pat? Any advice there? I, I think there's a few. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, the planning aspect has to be the key part. I, and I think, you know, not to... to to think about, you know, what would happen in a real disaster because you know this this is a disaster, probably the biggest disaster the planet has seen for for a, for, a, for, a, for a long long time. But actually, you know, the traditional disasters, be it floods or network down, all those kind of things still happen. You know, so a lot of customers at the moment are very dependent on their home, their 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 production office. You know, be it a data center, be it you know even customers remoting into their desktop PCs to do trades. You know, all of that IT is still there. Computer rooms that are sitting in the back of an office, you know, that aren't protected, you know, all of those things are still there. So I think it was very, it's almost like a pendulum. Everybody moved towards, actually, why do I need all this stuff? And I think now we're beginning to come back to, okay, so the world has changed. Yeah, this stuff needs to be protected. Our staff need to be protected. Yeah, we need a different plan. So I think the the pandemic plans that were written pre this pandemic really didn't fulfill. And, you know, who knows until you go through one what it's really going to look like. I think they need to dust off those business continuity plans, those pandemic plans and kind of come into that. And and I think the other the other thing is just access into the buildings, you know, make sure that, you know, we've got heat, you know, temperature cameras that detect people, you know, as they're walking through. We've got iPads that that you can put your face tells you if you're wearing a mask tells you what your temperature are you know before that before you're allowed access in the building one-way systems you know watch your lifts because you know access up and down lifts you know and, and we get a whole site invoked you know we use the fire exits to take people out of the building yeah so we man guards on the back doors so that you can actually come through the lobby and exit through the back so i think safety of your people is critical and i think uh, um, that's part of it so planning and safety you know to the, the key elements from my perspective all right Pat, that's really appreciated look on on behalf of digital I'd like to thank you for spending the time with us i know time is pretty precious i can imagine and on behalf of the rest of the planet thank you for keeping the lights on and the business continuity going and god knows how many businesses that you've You've kept protected and, and up during this thing. So we all really appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much for your time. I no, totally appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Phil.